Awesome. Hey, if you have your Bible, turn to Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 10. Yes, you can preach out of the book of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 10. I don't know about you, but when I was young, trying to go through the Bible, Leviticus was a hard book to read through, just being honest. But there's so much good stuff in there. We're going to look at a story in a few minutes. Left my water. So last week we started a series called doxa, which is the Greek word, classical Greek word for honor. Somebody say honor. honor. And uh, if you weren't here and you missed it, you can always go online to hear anyone that spoke on Sunday. But I want to just do a quick review. I'm not going to take my time at all, uh, but just kind of just get us all on the same page real quick. We said that the definition right here on the screen, the definition for honor is to hold in high respect. As for worth, merit, or rank. To hold in high respect as for worth, merit, or rank. And this is what I focused on, the second part of this definition last week. To esteem value. Somebody say value. Value. To esteem value. A lot of people don't feel valued anymore. Whether you're heard or you're valued or your presence. To esteem value. To revere. That's what we're going to talk about today. And to worship. That's what we're going to end the series on. To so esteem value, to revere, to worship. We looked at several passages of Scripture. I'm just going to give you a couple from last week. Romans 12.10 says this. It says, be devoted to one another in love. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Honor one another above yourselves. So when you're esteeming value upon someone, when you're honoring someone, you're honoring them You're honoring them above yourselves. I'm putting people before me. I'm placing them valuable. That's not going on in the world today. It's about to each his own. It's me and mine. It's it's, uh, my opinion is better than your opinion. Honor doesn't live there. Honor esteems value. Here's the thing about honor. You and I, we may not all agree on different things, but we can still honor each other. It's funny, I heard from a lot of people this week on, on last week's message and some co-worker situations I heard about, uh, some husband and wife situations, and, and normally maybe it would have gone down the wrong road, but in trying to take that road of honor, honor is placing the person, the customer, the client, the co-worker that gets on your nerves, the spouse, whoever it is, it's placing them and giving them value. You may not see eye to eye on everything, but you're giving them value and you're honoring them. Are you with me this morning? So, you know, here's the thing about it. When a person chooses to walk the road of honor, you definitely can take notice. You're like, something's different about them. Why? Because we live in such a self-absorbed, almost narcissistic world where disrespect and dishonor is running rampant everywhere. God has called us to be a people of honor. And here's what I know about honor. People take notice because honor is not just seen, or excuse me, honor is not just heard, it's seen. See, yes, we should be honoring with our mouths. We we should always be honoring with our mouths. We talked about this last week. We want to always be lifting up, not what? Tearing down. We always want to be lifting others up, not tearing down. Not, you know, not destructive, constructive, building up each other that it's just the spirit we want to walk in but but here here's what we know about honor it's not just heard out of our mouths it's seen when someone walks the road of honor people take notice you can see it you can feel it you you sense there's something different about that person it's the spirit of god and it's that person honoring the biblical principle of honor I want to give you the verse that I focused on heavily, heavily last week. Romans 12 says this real quick, if we have it there on the screen. Romans 12 says, uh, where is that? 12, 17. People take notice when your honor being walked out. Do things in such a way. Somebody say such a way. My capitalization here. Do things in such a way that everyone can, say it with me, see you are honorable. So there is a way to honor it's, it's tangible. It's real. I've had young people for years say, 
give me something that's real, Pastor Chris. I hear what you're saying, but give me, give me something practical and real. When you walk the road of honor, it's tangible, it's real. You know, uh, I've had a lot of people through the years uh, with young people uh, that, you know, that young people might not look them in the eyes when they're talking and they feel disrespected. Young people, uh, they have their head down or whatever. Not, not all, but a lot. But, but here's what I know. If we honor young people the way we want to be honored, something happens in the young person's heart. I mean, I, it's, it, and I know, you, and it's, it's hard for me sometimes. It was for years as a youth pastor. I mean, I would have a young person uh, you know, that would come that didn't know the Lord. They'd come to our service, and they'd just be cussing. I wanted just to get on to them and correct them, but the Lord would say, can you love them where they're at, not where you want them to be? I want to say that again. Can we love people where they're at, not where we want them to be? That's the real love of God. And so I've had so many people through the years, specifically young people for the last two decades, say, I kept coming to church, not because I believed in God yet, but because I felt so loved, welcomed, and honored. That goes against the culture. And I'm telling you what, I saw so many young people. I'm thinking of one young man that would always come, and he had horrible language on his T-shirts. Finally had to tell him, could you turn the t-shirt upside or, or inside out or something? I never told him you can't come to church. We kept loving him. Our leaders kept loving him. And I, I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to go into it because of time, but I mean, he, he was a white boy, but he was wearing all black. He was what they called gothic, and he had black eyeshadow. He had black nails. Scared me half to death. You know, like, I remember one time he came to the church right when he first started coming during the week, not on a service. And uh, my pastor walked in and said, uh, there's a visitor here for you. I'm like, no, he's here for you. He's not, not me. He's like, you're the youth pastor. You know, and so we're like arguing there because like he, he was a big boy. He was a little intimidating. And that big boy became a little boy in my office in a matter of 30 minutes in conversation talking about all the hurts when he was a young boy. And just honored and loved him where he was. And that young man became an incredible leader, not only in our student ministry, but in our church. God, aren't you glad you're one, of, I'm one of the stories that God turned around, turned it all around. Honor works. God came up with it. It's a biblical principle. It works. And by the way, I just want to say this, we need it now more in our nation than ever before. Honor. Do things in such a way. Paul said it like this in 2 Corinthians 8.21. He was talking about the context of carrying money, but I think it's interesting what he said here. We are careful, we are careful to be honorable before the Lord. Look at this, honorable before the Lord, but we also want everyone else to see that we are honorable. So you honor the Lord, but we also want man to see that we are honorable. Interesting with the Olympics going on, don't forget to be praying for Brazil, Rio, I think there's like a week and a half left in the Olympics. I've seen so many amazing interviews. Have you seen them? It's just been incredible. Not just Americans. Let's don't focus just on Americans, but Christians in different nations when they're being interviewed, and, and they're literally giving praise and glory to God. Can I tell you, the highest honor, that's what I want to talk to you about today, the highest honor always goes to the King and King and Lord of Lords. Always. That's what we were talking about and singing about earlier. That's why we were just bragging. Many of you in the room just proclaiming who he is to you. The, the ultimate guest in the room. By the way, if you're a guest with us today, we hope you feel welcome. But you're not the ultimate guest in the room. The ultimate guest is Jesus. He's the guest of honor. And we're so glad he's here with us through his Holy Spirit. So the highest honor. And I saw these two boys, these two young men. Olympic divers. Did you see it? It was unbelievable. It was awesome. Hey, simply because of time, I'm going to make this a two-parter, so I want you to stay with me, but we'll go to Leviticus next week. Would you scoot over real quick to 1 Peter? 1 Peter. We're just going to make this a two-parter. But, but here, here's what we know. The highest honor. Did you hear honor in that, in that interview? I'm surprised NBC still kept that on. <laughs> oh, liberal NBC. God bless them. You know, but 
they'll usually cut those conversations. They would always cut Tim Tebow off. Anytime he, first thing he would say, you know, when he was in college and even the pros uh, early on, he would always say, before I answer any of your questions, I want to give glory and honor to Jesus Christ. He's the reason that I play. He's the only way I can play. And they would just cut him off. Not just NBC, but other networks too. So I'm just like, hey, I'm, I'm glad they even kept it on the on line there. But you could hear the honor. Can I tell you what? That was real. That wasn't put on. They didn't have a note card to read. They were honoring each other because they first were honoring their king. Because here's what I just want to talk to you about just for a few minutes this morning. The highest honor. I just want to talk to you about just for a few minutes the highest honor. Last week we looked at the big subject of honor. Today and next week we're going to dive into this highest honor. The highest honor, the Bible calls it the fear of the Lord. If you're taking notes, I'm going to give you a few things in just a sec here. We have note not lines on the back of the bulletin. Holy Spirit, in these few minutes, would you help me speak? Thank you, Lord, for what you've already done in this place. Speak through me, in Jesus' name. Amen. The highest honor. Somebody say the highest honor. The highest honor is the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. It's a, it's a big subject. And I'm only going to scratch the surface of the fear of the Lord today and even next week. And i tell you what, we, we could go through three months of the fear of the Lord. And it's such a huge subject. There's all, uh, the fear of the Lord is all throughout the Bible. Uh, it, there's a lot of the fear of the Lord in Psalms and Proverbs. And, uh, and all, of course, it's all in the New Testament. But the fear of the Lord is, is that if I was to try my best to define the fear of the Lord... Here's the definition that we kind of came up with. The fear of the Lord is to hold in the highest honor to revere, there's our word reverence, and awe. So it's the fear of the Lord is to hold in the highest honor. I like that word hold. I'm going to hold you at the highest honor. If I slip, I'm going to get back up. Righteous man gets back up. And I'm going to hold you in the highest honor. Because you deserve The highest honor. You know, if the President of the United States walked in here right now, all of us, because we honor the office that he is, we would stand in honor. It doesn't matter if you voted for him. We honor God who puts men and women in authority. We honor. And how much more does the King of Kings deserve our honor? He's the highest honor. All I can think of in the United States, the highest place would be the President. We don't do kings and queens in this country, but we have a president. God deserves the highest honor, a reverence, awe, that word awesome. He's an awesome God. It's that the awesome is an all-encompassing word. It's, I don't know who even came up with the word, but it's like, how do I describe awesome? He's just awesome. All, and, and I said this a couple of weeks ago in the Blueprint series. I'm afraid that the church, capital C, has lost its awe of the Lord. It's awe of the Lord. That, that reverence before the Lord. We were singing about earlier. He's not just a God. He's a holy God. Highest honor. The fear of the Lord. Now, if maybe you're new to the faith or maybe you're a guest and you don't even know the Lord, let me just get everybody on the same page because the fear of the Lord, when I heard that as a young person, it actually made me fearful in the wrong way. Because I I used to think as a young person, when I heard uh, my good Baptist preachers preaching on the fear of the Lord, I mean, I was like, I, I, I want to give my heart to Jesus all over again. You know, like I had this holy fear, but it was, it was, a, it was a crippling kind of fear. It, it, it scared me of God, and that's not what I'm talking about. The, the, there's a big difference between the fear of the Lord and a spirit of fear. What does the Bible say? That God has not given us a spirit of fear, but what? Power, love, and a sound mind. I want to key on something. God has not given us a spirit of fear. So that comes from hell. Anyone here struggling with fear? And we all have at times. That comes from hell. We're talking about something completely different. A spirit of fear, a spirit of fear will cripple you if you allow it, spiritually speaking. You'll be so scared to fear of man, I don't know what to say, fear of failure. I mean, there's such a bunch of fears there. That's not what I'm talking about. That's from hell. I'm talking about a holy, reverent, awe, 
worshipful reverence before our God. That everything I do and everything I say would be honoring before the Lord and then man. A holy fear. Can I tell you, when I got the call from Brother Don, representing the elders, I had two kinds of fears jump on me real quick. I had a very nervous fear, like, oh my Lord, what am I doing? You know? But then I also had, and I got rid of that one real quick, I had a new holy fear come on me. I'm in Asheville, you're here. This was somewhere around April, and I got the call and asked for me to be the pastor, and I was humbled. I still am. I was honored. But when I got off the phone, I'm rejoicing. I woke my kids up. I was so loud. We were an hour ahead of you guys. But then as I sat there and laid on the bed thinking about it, I had a holy fear come on me of the weight of the responsibility and the leadership. And I'm like, God, this has to be you. Has to be you. Now that weight I have to give over every night before the Lord. The Bible says, cast your cares unto the Lord. But there is a responsibility and a leadership that man cannot feel, but the Spirit of God through man. Come on. It's not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. So you and I can't do anything without His Spirit who empowers us but I, I remember, like, I felt a weight in a good way. Hear me? Hear me? I felt a weight in a good way of responsibility that, that I, here's what I knew. From that moment, I'm going to have to seek the Lord, not out of works, but I'm going to have to seek the Lord differently than I have before. This is a new level. By the way, you need to know this. New levels, new devils. All right? The, the devils are defeated in Jesus' name. The plans of the enemy are defeated. But you better know, as you climb that ladder with God... It's going to be an arsenal of all kind of stuff. But I want to tell you what, though, there, greater is Jesus that's in us than he that's in the world. But it was, it, was a, it was a, the fear of the Lord came on me, and I'm like, I've got to seek him like I've never saw him before. I'm going to have to fast like I've never fasted before. Oh. Anybody tells you they love to fast, they're either Moses in the spirit, or they're lying. I don't know, I just can't. I hate it. I hate it. My flesh. I should say this. I hate fasting, but here's what I know. God does so much in my heart when I fast. So, uh, and, and we're actually going to have a called church fast in the month of September, joining thousands of churches as we're getting ready for the elections and our nation. Thousands of churches are coming together in the month of August and September across our nation to pray and fast for 21 days. My spirit is so excited. My flesh is like, oh Lord, no coffee for 21 days. I'm going to be like Leah, you know, just like nine kids, you know, nine people. In, but but, but here, here's what I know. The fear of the Lord is holding God in the highest place that he's already at. Let me tell you what, if we don't hold him there, he's still already there. He's there. The angels right now, this is going to drive my camera in crazy. The angels right now are going around the throne, constantly saying what? Holy Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We were just singing it. He's got the praises and the honor going nonstop. The saints who've gone before us are up there worshiping him. He's looking for us down here on earth to choose to give him the highest honor and then honor man right behind that. Honor. Look, at, look here before we close in 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. Start, we're going to start at verse 14. Are you there? Okay, verse 14. So you must live as God's obedient children. It's Peter talking to the church, talking to us today. I find this interesting, these words right here. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then, but now. Somebody say, but now. Aren't you glad for those but now moments in your life? You were going what one way, and then, but God showed up. But God. But now, you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. 
For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. Last verse. And remember that the heavenly Father to whom you pray has no favorites. Some other room like, darn. <laughs> remember that the heavenly Father to whom you pray has no favorites. He will judge or reward you. Somebody say me. Me. He will judge or reward me according to what I do. Notice it doesn't say, say, what I do. There's action there. Other scriptures, it talks about what we will say will be judged. That, that verse scares me. I can't remember where it's at. Brother John probably remember every idle word, you know, the, every careless word that comes out of our mouth will be judged. That's what the scriptures say. But look, look what he's saying right here. He doesn't say what we say, what we do. Action. So you must live action. So you must live, and look what it says here. Say it with me. Reverent fear of him. I, I love this. During your time here as temporary residents. I love Omaha, but Omaha is not my eternal home. The is, is, Bible calls us in a way aliens, strangers almost. We're here for, man, what is this like? Here today, God... But while we're here, may we live in such a way that when people see us, they see Jesus and feel Jesus through us, through the principle that we're talking about today, honor. Look back, if you would, at verse 14. These, these three words here, and I, I don't have time to dive into it. It's so huge, but it grabbed me, especially on Friday and Saturday. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back. Don't slip back. Anybody ever slipped and fall before? It is embarrassing. It's embarrassing when you're by yourself because you know the angels are probably laughing. It's embarrassing when you're a crowd of people. You could be walking. There's no nothing up here at all to make you trip. Have you ever done it? Come on, we all have. And somehow your foot grabs, I don't know, a carpet fiber that you can't see. And you're just like, you're talking to people, hey, uh, whoop. You know, and if you're, and if you're you know, elegant enough, or, you know, you can kind of catch yourself. Oh, I meant to do that. You know, but, <laughs> but you know, he, he's saying here, don't slip back into the old. We can't go back to the old. God is the God of new. Thank God for what he's done, but he's not talking so much about the good things. He's saying, don't slip back in your old nature. The old thinking of putting me first, or this is my way, or whatever. All those, you know, whatever those things are that are the old for you or the old for me. He says, don't slip back. I have a pair of shoes that, uh, I don't know why we, we have stairs. But there's one, this one pair of shoes that I wear that every time on the carpet, I almost l lose it, you know. And now I don't even put them on until I get downstairs because of several times of just slipping on the one carpet. And, you know, it's, it's just easy to slip and fall. I had a, 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 an injury where I had to go to the hospital. I slipped on ice with a bunch of middle schoolers. They all laughed when I fell until they heard me scream. And there was like, somebody needs to pray for Pastor Cree, you know. It went from laughing because it probably looked hilarious. I was trying to get, you've been there. If you've skied or iced, you know, just whoop, I just lost it. It was good until I hit the ground. Don't slip back. Why am I talking about this in the context of the fear of the Lord? Because it's so easy to slip and get casual in your relationship with God. And get when you get casual and we begin to treat the presence of God as just common, you get lazy. Come on, you can see where it's going. It just, it's like a trickle-down effect. Now look, I, I, I like to look sharp. I just want you to know if I look sharp, it's because of my, my wife right there. All right? I'll walk out of the closet. Honey, how's this look? She'll just be like, mm, no, 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 no. Okay, I'm going back in. You know, so... Um, you know, so if, if I look sharp, it's because of her. I honor her right now in that. Uh, but, but here's what I know. You know, I'll, if, you, if you know me at all or, or you come to my house to hang out, I'm going to be wearing T-shirt and shorts and some flip-flops. That's at the house. Why would I be wearing a sports coat at my house watching a football game? That's just weird. You know, I'm going to get comfortable. I'm going to get casual. Anybody in the house with me on this? Come on. All right. 
But if I'm, I'm going to come to church, not that I have to, but I, I, some, somebody asked me the other day, or somebody asked you to wear a sports coat? No, I just kind of like to wear one sometimes, and, and, uh, and I like to dress up. And I remember someone told me when I first came in the guest boat, like, you're the first person to ever wear a sport coat and jeans on that stage <laughs> and preach. I said, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, but, but anyway, but, and, I, and I hope you don't take offense to all that, but you know what I'm talking about. Like, there's something about dressing casual. I like a casual dinner. I like to go see just a, a casual night and walk around, you know, the mall and just, or go see, just casual kind of, you don't have to have all major plans, but then I also, come on, gentlemen, you better know this, you better have a special night for your special lady, and you better not tell her, we're just going to go casual tonight. If all week you told her, I'm taking you out, I'm going to treat you like a queen, and then she's like, where are we going? I don't know, we're just going to, it's going to be real casual. That's going to be a bad night for you. So, <laughs> casual, we can't treat God, we cannot treat God in His awesome, glorious presence casually. I want to say this, I am so thankful to be in a church, not that we're better than anybody else, that our worship leader and the worship team and the way it is on a Sunday morning that we don't just go through the song list, one, two, three, sit down. Now listen, we don't want to get prideful about that because we're not worshiping those moments, we're worshiping Him. We don't ever want to be like, yeah, we're the church that, ha-. no, we don't get caught up in that. But I'm just so thankful that we honor Him so much that we'll, our worship leader, Pastor Andrew, will take us through with the worship team, the songs, and and. He's trying to hear the Lord. I'm trying to hear the Lord. And, and, and the gifts are flowing. Sometimes there's a word. Sometimes there's a tongue. There's an interpretation. And we're just, we're just, we're all, come on, here, let's put it this way. We're all just students of the presence of God. Because nobody in the room knows everything. We're just trying to, God, what are you saying? Because we want to honor you in this moment. Now, there's things that should be said, and there's things that shouldn't be said. And we have to, all of us have to hear the Lord on that. There, there's, there's, it needs to go with the flow. It needs to honor him. Sometimes it's just like, I just need to say this to someone else. And sometimes it needs to be said because it's being said from the Spirit of God straight out to the heart of God for his people. Are you with me? But we do it in the big umbrella of honor and the fear of the Lord. Here's what I would leave, we, leave you with today. Are we getting, as I've been challenging myself all week studying, am I getting too casual? Hear me on this church, closing thoughts. Christ did not die for us to have great attendance on Sunday. Attendance on Sunday is great and important. You can't make everything, of course. My attendance on Sunday, take pastor away from me. The priority of God's house for me and mine is because I love him. I don't do it out of works. I love being with his people. I love being in his house. I love the church, capital C. I love this church. But I love it all, and I do it all because I love and honor him first. This on earth comes out of my relationship with him. Can I tell you what? Everything starts vertical, and then it flows horizontally. I I have a, a fear of the Lord that I want my children and my grandchildren, if the Lord tarries, to love his house. To, to love his presence. That, that, that fear of the Lord like, God, please. We want you and nothing but you. And it's just so easy. Hear me, through time, you check into church on Sunday. I was there. And we become casual. And when you get casual, if you don't, we'll look at a story next week where two young men got too casual with God. But today, I just leave it with you. It's just so easy to get casual with Him. But it leads to things of laziness and dishonor. And and before you know it, hear, hear me on this, you get caught in religion. Christ didn't die for religion. He died for relationship. But religion, you know what religion is? Someone said this a long time ago. Religion's just going through the motions. I was at church. Oh, this is what you do. You lift your hands. You say the right things. I'm doing great, brother. You know, you talk the talk. And it's at a religious duty. Even even some people, doesn't matter how old you are, they, they read the Bible, and they read the Bible out of homework. I just got to read the Bible. 
it's more like a homework mode than it is, I, I got to be in His Word because I want to hear from Him today. And even if I don't feel like I get anything, I thank you, Lord, that your word is so powerful that it cannot return void. But I have a fear of the Lord that if I get away from his word, I'm going to slip back and fall. Peter said, don't slip back into the old. But he said, have a live as temporary residents with a reverent fear before the Lord. Father, we are so thankful for your glorious presence. And I ask you now, God, in Jesus' name, forgive us as a people of making you small. I'm praying today, Lord, for people in this room that where we have made you small, that we would begin to supersize you again in our mind and our heart where we have grown cold or casual. Lord Jesus, that we would begin to seek you like we've never sought you before. Father, where we've grown lazy, maybe in our time of the word or just getting up and seeking you. I feel like right now the Spirit of God has been telling some of you to seek him, just like I told you my story, to seek him like you've never sought, sought him before. And no condemnation if, you, if you've been missing it. It's no condemnation in the Lord. But start today by seeking Him. Start today doing that new thing. Whether it's getting up early or staying, staying up just a little later just to fall asleep reading the Word. Whatever it is, you know what God's talking to you about. But to begin to seek Him. So Father, we come to you now and, and we just want to say it as your sons and daughters. You deserve the highest honor. We love you, God. We love you, Jesus.